Hey everybody, this is Anne coming to you from Homestream, yay! And Homestream may get a little bit more frequent now since, you know, everything going on. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but hey, I'm here. It's Monday. How are you all? Are you doing well? Are you working from home? Are you, you know, still out and about in the world? You know, I hope you're doing well. It's Monday. Ah, the least favorable day of the week. And it's quite a dreary, overcast one, rainy one here. We had a very rainy weekend uh, here in Denton. Hey, Robin. Here, let me uh, disable my pro tips intro for later when I go back to my face screen. Boop. There. Hey, Quindy. Good to see ya. I'm going to kind of get some of my paint mixed while we chat a little bit. Kids sent home, faculty sent home, college still requiring staff to report. Okay. Very interesting, Magnetic Gumby. Do they, you know, do they give you a little streaming room where you can stream your classes? Uh, it's like, it seems odd to like send home, you know, everybody and then, you know, have the staff come in only to not like make use of them. But that's weird. Who knows? It's, it's universities and schools, right? Ah, yeah, exactly. I'm Fontana. Yeah. Some people were already, you, you had to jump on it, right? Yeah. Hey, missed him. Hey, Taz. Morning, Everlina. Morning, Planer. Morning, everyone. There is Mr. Sultry Voice coming online. Also, uh, I realize it too, is the more we do these from home, like, uh, I need like an actual workstation. So I have like a gaming setup, which is great, but I realize I could use a third and fourth monitor probably mounted above the monitors I currently have. Uh -huh. There's just so much, like, I just, I need all of these feeds of stuff. You need, you need Justin's like master control center. I do. Then and you could I, take I, a picture of it and everybody would go, Ooh, ah. I never thought I would need that, but in doing this stuff, I, I get why people do. <laughs> yeah, it just seems excessive to me. I would I would lose track of where I was looking. I think it's exclamation point Anne's Patreon uh, planner, right? Yes, I, yes, it is. I'll wait a little bit and before I go and give it a plug, since we don't have many people on yet. <laughs> you need to rent out your own TV station, Justin. See that. Well, I'm hoping that's what we build when we go to this next studio. Yes, Grand No Cookies, Thanks. it is weasel time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when they go to the next studio, right? Hopefully they will build you your... But that doesn't help when you're doing stuff from home, so... Absolutely correct. But it won't be too hard. I can pick up a couple of monitors. I don't think Dave will mind. Dave won't mind if you just run out, you know. Pick up a couple of gigantic television sets. Say that they're uh, monitors. <laughs> monitors for your. It says here you bought a seventy-five inch TV. Yeah, I needed that for the. Uh, uh, you I know. needed. I needed to see Anne's details up close so I could more, uh, you know, more effectively commentate. There we go. See, good excuse. Alrighty, I have paint colors mixed. Except I forgot my reddish color. So let's do that. So I have a set uh, palette of colors that I tend to use for all animals. And the reason for that is that most mammals at least have the same genes that control their colors. And there's a red and a yellow gene uh, along with black interaction genes. So it's like different uh, colors of pigment. So usually for the red pigment, I'm using something based off of 9109 ruddy leather. And usually for the yellow pigment, since it's usually kind of pale or, or often not too strong, I'll, I'll use like... Usually 9073, um, chestnut gold is a great one for that. But this ferret is, uh, they really don't have a lot of the yellow. They have more black and reddish and cream. So let us see, I'm gonna actually turn to uh, Minicam and show you my ferret picture because he's adorable. Yeah, ruddy leather is like must, must have. Greetings, Paul John's life. Greetings, everybody. I'm gonna go over to the thing. Minicam! Huzzah! All right, so as you can see, I am in the midst of mixing, but but here, here is, and we weren't very organized this morning or I could have actually gotten this uploaded to myself. Here is Mr. Ferret. Isn't he adorable? Um, so, here we go. Yeah, um, my dog genetics uh, studies have taught me that uh, thread of, uh, threads of, threads of, of fate? Threads of fate. That's it. Right, got it. All right, so yes, adorbs. And you can see exactly um, what I'm talking about. So you can see he's got his white and he's definitely got black. And then you can see how the black and red kind of interact to give you this kind of ruddy brown. Um, then we definitely got some more reddish colors here on his back. 
And mostly it's the reddish hairs that are kind of interacting here to make kind of a cream color. Um, so instead of using uh, my stained ivory, I could actually go with more of a bone color uh, if I wanted to. So I'm deciding. I haven't decided. I'm, I think I'm mostly going to stick with the ivories, but, but I could definitely hear and here you can see I, go, I could go with a bone color instead. Um, <laughs> painting one with a sable hairbrush. I know he's looking at you reproachfully going, what? But he's got a snarl on his face, so he looks displeased anyway. So, you know, that's why he's unhappy, pretty much. Wait, that ferret looks displeased? This ferret looks displeased, Oh, that for ferret, sure. okay. Yes. I was about to say, this that ferret this... there looks very sweet. It's adorable, yes. And, and ignore the fact that they're bloodthirsty killers in nature. Um, more that's, that's more weasels, but yeah. Hey, that's my butt hair. All right. Yeah, I love the ivories. They're pretty good. They're, they're what I default to for wolves also because they have a lot of brown. I may grab a bone color. Let me see what I've got over here. How you doing, Grey Paladin? Oh, my spinny. I don't know. I don't know if I grabbed a lot of bone colors because I usually just mix crap when I need something. And with the technical information. No, I thought I had a bone color somewhere. Oh, yeah. There I am. Oh, okay. I have bleached linen. That actually is a pretty good color, but it's not dark enough. We might use that. We might think about it. All right. Let us get to ferret. So when dealing with an animal like this, I will usually start out base coating with the lightest tone. So for him, that's definitely going to kind of be an off white. Uh, and then he gets very white on his face. Um, and otherwise he stays pretty off white, except he gets uh, some definite whiteness on his tail. So I'm mostly going to probably, I'll probably mix creamy ivory and bleached linen and go with that. Um, he'll end up being a little more golden than this guy is, but they really do vary a lot in their coloration. So I think I'm pretty, pretty home free with that. So let's grab some bleached linen and put it over here. Uh Oh, not mixing it up sufficiently. Noob mistake and noob mistake. See, even I make noob mistakes. <laughs> Cold blooded colors of Pepsi. Yeah. Like you want a bunch of ferrets on sugar. Like, that just sounds like a terrible idea, having I lived a, with I ferrets. A ferret growing up, actually. Did you have a ferret? I always wanted one, but it just was never really going to work for me, just in my living situations. I did live with people, people who had two, though. So I am familiar with their idiosyncrasies. They are terribly adorable. Now, they uh, they are definitely escape artists, but I think people knew. I didn't know that when I got it. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, my ferret actually ran away. Like it managed oh, wow. to get out of its cage, out of the house. And it was just uh, like, we dude, like, I am gone. Correct. Unless there's something my parents didn't tell me a long time ago. <laughs> or it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> I'm going to use a brush full of black and brown in this actually to try to take it down. Let's see if that's going to be too much. You had a neighbor's ferret invade the house. Did you live next door to Justin? <laughs> see it happens there you go like they but they are great like you have to like block off every exit especially if they're... i'm gonna mix some more yellow into this i'm trying to get to a a nice kind of bone color but i need a little warmer i don't want it to go pink so yeah thank you for the twitch prime much yay twitch prime see how you subs. doing plasma hey that adds to our subtotal let me see how this looks on him that's not too bad actually that's not a bad color to start with Sneaky sneak rats. Yeah. So shadow pants or uh, shadow spawn. <laughs> I like shadow pants the assassin better, uh, but shadow spawn. Yay. Thank you. Um, we need to add that to our total, Justin, for the next one. Oh, hey, and I was going to schedule the AMA today. What day would you guys like to do the AMA? I was kind of thinking maybe Thursday morning. Maybe that would work. What do you think, Justin? Uh, I think Thursday is a good day for Yeah. Yeah. Thursday. That gives people we can advertise it a little bit. You can always catch it after the fact. I'm going to go, if you have questions, get them in on Questionable Anne on the Discord. And we will uh, schedule the AMA for Thursday. Oh, thank you for the gifted number. Yay! Yeah, so we already have the subs we need for this AMA, but we totally could get some subs working toward, we're getting some subs working toward our next AMA. Which, if there's a lot of questions, makes sense because, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to go through them all first time in fact i'm very curious to see how many i actually do get through hello weasel we do the weasel face weasel face how you doing uh dragon heart also uh yeah ama which is an ask me anything and uh 
I believe, since Plan has been really good about it, if she links the Discord here in chat, uh, you can go there. There's a channel called Questionable Anne, and you can put anything in there, and we will try our best to work our way through. Now, yeah. at the pace we answer them, that's obviously that's all up to Anne. Yeah, and it depends on the complexity of the question, you know, also. Um, and it depends also, like, some questions may be way too complex for, uh, for the AMA, and I may just need to schedule them to do a show on them. Um, one of my toolbox shows. So, you know, if there's a particular, how do you paint X? And I'm like, that would take an hour to teach you. Oh, um, thank you for the bits, Numbat. Yay, bits. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm with you there, actually. I think that uh, really, though, if um, if we we end up only getting a few way through the questions, I don't want to answer all of them necessarily. Well, but no. If we don't make that much progress, we might do another AMA, to like a part two for the same goal that we hit. Because Well, I don't want to get through all of them. I actually want to have some left over for the next month. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so it, if we get through, I'll be happy if we get through four or five or more, like, you know, depending on how easy they are. Um, we could get through like up to 10 maybe if they were very short. Um, but yeah, we really don't know. It really depends. I noticed I missed some uh, mold lineage here, some flash. Um, it really depends just on, on the type of question and how long it takes me to write, effectively answer it for you. Uh, or if the answer is going to be no, we're going we're gonna to do that later, um, which I reserve the right to say. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. but don't uh, don't think that your question is too hyper specific because we want you to be able to. In fact, you can include pictures if you'd like to. Um, where, for instance, if you're working on a piece and you have an issue with one specific thing and you want Anne to help with that, feel free. Yep, yep, you could absolutely do that. You could show. You could even send a picture. Oh, I've got another little mold line. One second, while I take my knife and gouge this ferret. Woohoo! Gouging ferret. So I forget, is it hill giants that keep giant weasels as pets? One of the giant races do. And we've been doing a lot of giants, so I know that with um, frost giants, it's like winter wolves. I thought it was uh, hill giants for giant weasels. Oh, Saul, that, or Saul, 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 maybe? Um, that is a contentious question. It is. Um, but however, if you were specifically asking if I prime Reaper Bones models before base coating, I do not. Um, I Instead of priming, I wash them with hot water and a bit, bit of dish soap, and I let them dry overnight on a towel, which enables me to put a thinner base coat on and still have it stick. I have never seen the need for priming bones. But there are many people online who will get very passionate about it. I can only answer it from my personal experience, and my personal experience is that I do not prime them. Priming, if you look at it, priming serves two purposes, really. Priming serves the purpose of giving you a solid colored base coat or a dual colored base coat if you're doing a Zenith Prime. Um, to work over, right? So that if you're doing a Zenith Prime, you can set up your highlights and shadows really easily at the beginning so that you can remind yourself where they are. Um, if you're just doing a solid color primer, maybe you want white so you can work easily over it. So that would be a good reason to do it. Um, but the other reason is that primers help paint adhere to a model that normally paint would wear off of, which with metal, it's so heavy and the edges, uh, the, the metal is much stronger and sharper than the paint. It's a harder substance than the paint. So paint will naturally rub off if you put pressure on it. That's exactly what happens. But plastic is not as heavy and it is not, um, it, it, it doesn't have that same degree of softness or hardness, right? Uh, plastic is much softer than metal. And that's why you see less rub off on it unless you're really using your models for a lot of gameplay. Um, but the paint also bonds to the surface differently with the PVC than it does with metal. And so that's why I say that you don't need to prime, but you certainly can prime. If you are going to prime, you need to test your primer in advance or follow the recommendations of people online because many primers will react badly chemically with bones. So the PVC is not prime friendly to all primers because there are temp chemicals in some primers that will reactivate the surface. Your primer will never dry uh, it will stay tacky forever, and it might also off-gas and stink. So you do want to follow recommendations online Ooh, for that. Thank you for the bits, Numbat. Yay, Continued more bits. bits. That's crazy and awesome. Thank We're you. We're 84% um, toward a hype train. Yes. Uh, and to, to kind of, uh, you know, expand on what Anna is saying, is it basically Reaper stance is that 
I mean, you can you can do both like people do. Uh, it's just the only thing we caution you, like she just said, is that there are plenty of spray primers that will basically not melt your bones, but, you know, it doesn't react well. Right. Right. And uh, but beyond that, the only the Reaper's official stance is wash it with warm soap and water and let it, you know, pat it dry or dry it however you want. Let it dry. It's and then it's fine. So um, that is that's the official stance from Reaper. Yes. So uh, right now I'm mixing the, my first color, which was, uh, for the most part, bleached linen with a bit of stained ivory, a drop of stained ivory in it. And then I actually put a little bit of the black and brown in it because I decided I needed a more bone-like color and less of a yellowy color for the ferret. So now I've added a little bit of that bone color back into my stained ivory to make it. And remember, okay, the reason I do this is that as long as this color has a little bit of that color in it, it's going to work with it. If it doesn't, then it may clash or may not look like it's, you know, going to go. So this is, this, fig, uh, this also factors in when you're building highlights or shadows for something. As long as you have a little bit of your previous color mixed into your new color, they're going to go together better. So for me, I wanted a little warmer color on the legs because I'm about to mix in black and brown to get his black feet. And uh, if I didn't have enough yellow in, it would go pinkish. And I do not want that. So I do not want pink. So I'm going to block this color in. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna switch brushes so I have a better tip, this is my mixing brush. But what I'm doing, and you can kind of see it here, is I'm using a brush stroke that's in line with the direction the fur is going. So the fur is coming off the shoulder and it's going like that. So I'm leaving little marks that go along with the direction of the fur. And uh, doo -doo -doo. let's see here. Do I seal them? Threads of fate? No, I don't seal my bones models. For that matter, I don't seal my metal models unless it's a gaming figure. Or if I'm shipping it. If I'm going to ship it, then I do seal it. Just because, just in case. But most of the time, I seal, I do seal most of the really heavy metal models. Like if I've got a really, like when I paint for Germ, if there's a big old heavy slug of lead that I painted, um, I will definitely seal that sucker. Um, Is there any downside to sealing if you don't necessarily need to? Like no, if you just, just seal time. everything by default, is um, it depends, right? Some sealers will actually take down your highest highlights. Like they'll actually make your highlights fade a little bit. Um, some people will also point out the fact that if it's not an archival level sealer, it may eventually yellow. Uh, but usually that's only a problem if it's being exposed to a lot of UV, which most of our models are not like sitting out in the sun. So, you know, you, you take it with a grain of salt, really. A lot of that advice is meant for archival artwork. And uh, not necessarily for your average miniature figure. But do keep it in mind. I mean, some sealers will absolutely yellow over time. So depends on how long you want your model to look awesome. I'm just blocking in his front paw here. And uh, what I did, I'll explain in a second. I'm just going to bring this in. Get the back of his little paw with this black and brown. There we go. Good, good ferret. All right. So what I did is I started with a mixture of this and kind of wet blend of this and the black and brown. Um, and then I'm bring, gonna bring in more straight up black and brown to get the really dark um, appearance. However, right now, I'm gonna do more little fur texture and I'm just gonna try to match. The problem is that this fur is just a little bit off. It doesn't flow down onto the leg like it normally would. So I'm just kind of having to not be too far off of the fur texture. Do you want to leave a little bit of a suggestion that these dark hairs are coming up like they do on Mr. Ferret? So kind of in a triangular, you can see how it's kind of in a triangle. It's kind of like a Siamese cat that way, and then it blends in. And it kind of goes into a stripe up over his shoulders, so I'll probably build that in um, to make it look that way. And then it's probably going to continue in a stripe down his back. He actually is a lot like a Siamese cat. Uh, dull coat mess up their paint job. Um, it doesn't lift colors times to sure, but it may, as I say, take your highlights down. I've never had dull coat, uh, lift colors otherwise, but I have had it, uh, if when I'm using thinned white for highlights, I have seen it, seen it dull my highlights. Uh, Chars ask if Reaper's, uh, sealers yellow. Um, I would, you know, I don't know. I would imagine, and when, keep in mind when we're talking over time, we're talking like 50 to 100 years. <laughs> so, you know, this is like the difference between archival and non-archival. Our sealers are non-archival. So hypothetically, if exposed to enough light, they would eventually yellow. I'm going to make that guess. That's a pure guess on my part. Just because I know. Uh, we, we've never. 
or what was we've, that? sorry we've never had a report of it yeah Correct. we've never ever no not ever have no we've never had a report of it but i mean we've only been existing for 15 years so so there you go yeah so if it's a if it's a year thing then then it's kind of like um resin where uh two-part resins and the resin that they make uh, figures out of is technically going to eventually turn into a blob, but it might take it 150 years to do so. So I still use resin, even though it'll eventually blobulate a bit and my mod my model's paint job will not be nearly as awesome. Uh, I still love working with it, can't help it. Um, so yeah, there's there are many impermanent things in the art world, and but most of them will outlive you. Uh, so. So the question is how, how much for posterity is your work? If you're a very high level painter or you're aiming to become one um, and you really want your work to survive because you think that, you know, down through the ages, miniature painting is going to become a respected art form and your stuff is going to be like valuable to your future family members. Well then, you know, pick stuff accordingly. I'm just blocking in some lighter tones on his side. I've got kind of that collar up. Keep in mind, see how my brush stroke is in line with the way the fur will grow. Now I'm going to go to... Creamy, ivory. Kind of block that in. All of his, his uh, lower neck is all very pale. But I'm probably going to use... Mm, I'm probably going to mix some white with this to highlight it a little bit. It's going to get some reflected light up from the ground. All right, I should do the other little front leg. Little front legs. Uh... Yeah, Maldrick, I mean, it's like I said, it's like 100 years, right? That's a, that's what is how it was explained to me. It's like the compounds that make resin are not stable forever. So eventually they are going to get blobby. But I mean, I had GW models that were 25 years old and they were just fine, you know, old Forge World. And uh, there's still a bunch of that old, um, like the line that, you, is it armor cast? Yeah, armor cast resin, uh, the yellow resin that uh, used to do GW stuff. Um, and that's still around and looks fine. So when we're talking, you know, not permanent, not archival, it really is a whole, you know, it is probably going to live longer than you. <laughs> so how much that matters to you should be factored in along those lines, right? Um, let's see, I'm going to put my saddle up here. Just kind of figuring in on either side where I want that, that uh, pattern to be. And actually, I'm going to look at his little rear legs. Also, since I've actually fielded a couple of these questions over the over the weekend, um, there's been some concern that, you know, with the, the growing issue, obviously, in the country that we maybe stream less or that uh, we, we cancel some shows, stuff like that. Um, I was talking to Anne before the show, and, and we talked about maybe having Anne, since she does have a, a home set up, that we tr still try to hit our time slots. Um, if we can, if it really comes down to it. So we're not streaming less. We just may have changed the shows up a bit um, to accommodate her home stream. So it may be more painting and less like Terrain, for instance. So a good example is tomorrow, Terrain Tuesday is actually canceled. Um, not because Ed's, Ned's not like severely sick or anything. He's just got a little bit of a head cold and he doesn't, you know, doesn't want to bring it to everyone. So he is uh, he does not want to do the show tomorrow. Um, with that being said, going forward maybe next week or further depending on uh, how things get uh, and might be the one to step in and show us some cool terrain painting right in yep yep i've got i've got a big base a big uh one of the i think it's from bones five isn't it the temple base kind of thing um with the columns uh i've got that i've been wanting to do a bunch of cool stuff on it so i was thinking i might do that and take the pressure off of ed's show especially because i only have a couple more weeks till i have to really put all my time into moving um, so I can, you know, at least do a couple of weeks. So I figured worst case scenario, uh, you know, it, I'll, I'll have, uh, I can get John in uh, on our channel sculpting so that we have something going or, uh, I can, I will do something. Maybe I'll paint. The point is you guys will have something to watch at some point. Um, you're, you're not going to have a, a, you know, withdrawals cause we won't stream for a whole week or anything like that. We will uh. continue to try to stream. Yes, we will continue to try to satisfy, to give you your fix. Yeah, we're going to continue to give you your fix. Yeah, I think we're, we're committed to doing that. We're committed to giving you a fix, yes. We want you to watch our stuff. I'm just going to add in some red, some ruddy leather. 
Exactly. That exactly, Taz Lance. I figure now more than ever, you guys rely on us to keep from going stir crazy, and we uh, we will we will absolutely just not. We're not going to stop at any point. So we're can't we're stop. Make won't it. stop. We will stream. That exactly. If we have to do an entire stream where we do nothing but play marbles with one another, and I do nothing but give stuff away. Yeah. You know, we can do that too. Well, yeah, because, I mean, this is a great way for everybody to get social interaction without being together. So it's a, it serves a dual purpose in my mind. I'm going to start moving more ruddy, ruddy colors into him because he's got more brownish red on his back. So I'm going to start blocking that in. I may need more yellowy colors on him after all, now that I'm looking at it. Um, oh, thank you, Malin, for the five tier ones. Wow. We're going to get to our second AMA before we've even done our first AMA at this rate. Yeah, I agree. All right, so I'm going to get some of this. Yeah, I think I want more yellow. Where is my... Where is a nice yellowy color? Browns, browns, browns. It doesn't even need to be 70. I know I've got 73 around here, but I seem to have, like, misplaced it. So instead, I'll use polished leather. There is no, like, exactitude in the colors that I use. I just need a yellowish color and a red... A yellowish color that is brownish and a reddish color that is brownish. Um, so polished leather 9430 is going to be our stand-in for uh, chestnut gold. It needs some shaking, but other than that, it should be a pretty good stand-in for chestnut gold. It's actually a bit more saturated. It has more yellow in it. Uh, Jojen, no, I, I don't actually paint. I think that would be the entertainment. This, yeah, it would be Justin. An hour could uh, just absolutely, honestly, you could just roast me. You could laugh at me. All of that's fine. Uh, the title needs to be yes. The title needs to be Justin paints his first mini online. Come and troll yeah, him. <laughs> correct. That's what it would be. Yep. Come and troll him. So when wet blending, start with a big blob of paint. Grab another blob of paint and smoosh. I want to see how this yellow works out for me, and I'm going to work in some of my off white. Don't want it to be too yellow, but I do want him to get a bit more golden. Ugh. Don't use the Annie Nomad Zeke. God, that was my my young name. Like, people would call me Annie when I was a little kid, and I hated it. I hated it. I still hate it. I'm not Annie. I'm an Anne. Get it straight. I will get militant about this in the in the manner of a five-year-old who was outraged if you continue. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta hear this. Also, uh, yes. You know what? I agree, Tazlan. Just in case you're bored. Also, um, you guys, it would just be my voice, and it would be me painting. In fact, I might as go as far as to put gloves on, because I can't have you guys, you know, actually see parts of Parts of Justin? Yeah, right. You should wear a mask. You, you also should get, like, an opera mask. And so when you do your face cam, you're in the opera mask. Although, didn't... I don't even, I don't even know if I'd do a face cam. Wow. You're, you're denying your fans. It's, I think, but then it breaks the, uh, the immersion. They want, the mystique. Uh, they want... To break the mystique is he even real oh, yes he's real. jokes on you it's gonna be someone else painting and just my voice comment <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna hire somebody really good he's gonna get proctor or lovejoy to come down yeah, and I've then he's gonna say this, this is justin time. yeah yeah and then he's just gonna voice over and have them paint something amazing um yeah i could see justin doing that totally griefing you guys like that I'm just playing around at this point. I'm wet blending. Everything is very wet, you can see right now. Um, I'm just trying to essentially keep my brush strokes in the direction of the fur. And I'm going to blend to get uh, gradient colors in between. And this, what this does is it creates that same effect that you get on an animal, where a lot of the times, like, wolves aren't actually gray. What you're seeing is the interaction of the black guard hairs over the creamy undercoat, and that makes the wolf look gray. So the wolf doesn't actually have gray hairs, per se, necessarily. Um, so with a ferret, this is what this wet blending accomplishes, is kind of that same effect where, you know, you, you normally would get one color over another color, but it's, it's really difficult to do that with paint um, without spending 50 years painting a ferret. So instead, you can kind of wet blend a little bit until you get the color that you are aiming for and he'll actually end up probably being a little more colorful than my photo but that's okay all right little ferret i think i'm gonna do his little face i think i want to do his little face yeah this side is more this side is the yellow i kind of like the yellow though i'm okay with the yellow i'm gonna 
drown it out with some cream color, stained ivory, just to knock it back just a little bit. Once it's semi-dry, I can kind of do hair strokes into it. That's adorable, Max Powers. That's, that's adorable. What was that? Oh, yuck. Please, no. That would be uh, not only a TMI, but, you know, like an adult content, I'm sure. All right. Give yourself a bit more of that. Now, whatever you do, do not mix your yellow color with your blackened brown or walnut brown because it will go green. So it's very important to, uh, I'm going to go down here because that's where the black's going to be. So it's very important to make sure that your red color is a buffer between your yellow and your uh, near black colors. There we go, little pause. And again, I'm just blocking it in. You notice I'm still doing a brush stroke that's similar to the hair direction. And that's the rule with all fur. Make sure that your brush strokes go in the same direction as the fur is going on the animal. And you can absolutely block it in this rough and then start putting like hairs over the outside of it. No problem. I think I'm going to like this weasel. I'm messing around with colors here, but eventually I will settle on a point where I like the weasel. There we go. His little haunch, his rear haunch has uh, been defined in dark color. And I probably will get very close to pure black on his little toes, but I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Well, I can blend in a little bit there. A little bit more red. Do, 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 do. But yeah, we may do a lot of home streams coming up depending on how things go with uh, everything. I still need to clean up my office, so we may do some in-person streams, but, uh, but we'll see. Maybe not. I may just come home and stream. Just to keep your Reaper content level high. It's a necessary part of this balanced online diet. <laughs> He's mixing a bunch of different colors in here. He's going to be a very colorful ferret compared to our original ferret, but that's okay. I saw an artist in Santa Fe when we were looking at galleries that did a lot of a lot of very bright colors in her animals, and it still worked out great. So they looked really cool, and they still had a very realistic style to them, which was cool. Very, very saturated colors. All right, ferret, ferret. Let's do... Oops, Valandar. All right, let's get our ferret picture again. I need to look at his little face. This is, of course, the snarly version of the ferret in the photo. So, all right, I need a reddish part of the top of the head because he's very red up there. I guess this ferret does have a lot of red and yellow and different colors on him. So he's got his little, little top hat and it comes down over his nose. It widens out and then it narrows. And it's probably going to end around here because the front of the snout is white or an off-white, so there. So always when you're doing, because this counts as freehand kind of, you're duplicating a pattern, right? So figure out like a key point. For me, it's this broad forehead and it comes down and widens out and hooks up with the black markings here. So I'm gonna get sure that it gets really wide over the forehead, just like it does on the picture. Come down through the front, hit this. All right, so then you've got that kind of cuts in and then cuts out. Kind of picture you just want to get mostly mostly what it looks like and then we're going to take our dark color 
which is black and brown or walnut. In this case, I'm kind of using a mixture of both. And this comes in and then it comes out again. And then it comes down around here. I think it cuts in there. It's kind of going to be distorted because he's got a snarl on, but in general, it's a mask effect and his eye is right here. Um, and his eye there is right there. So essentially I can kind of give him a mask and it hooks up with that brown there. And I color it in. A little ferret mask. Yay, ferret mask. Uh, physical palette, hereticage, um, or hereticage, or her hereticage, or whatever your name is. Uh, yeah, actually, um, we have a palette command. What is it? Uh, is it RTB? Ex exclamation point RTB? I have a... Uh, for the palette? Yeah. For the palette, it is uh, exclamation point tools. Oh, ex okay. Came up with it specifically for that palette. Okay. So... Uh... So here, here, hey, I'm just going to call you here. So here. <laughs> it's also her, it's also her uh, primarily used brush as well, unless it's not the one she's currently using. No, I am past. using my primarily, I am using my primary brush because I want to get close on these details. Uh, so the palette is porcelain. I use porcelain because it is extremely easy to clean. Um, I hate palettes where I can't scrub them out. I like to start with a fresh surface. So I p pick porcelain for my pet well palette for that reason, because it, it easily, you toss it in the sink with some hot water and simple green or 409 in it, whatever household cleanser you've got at hand, let it soak for a few minutes and you're good. Um, so why do I use a well palette instead of a wet palette? Uh, because I'm a paint consistency control freak um, and wet palettes annoy me because I cannot get my paint to a solid paint consistency that I could work from. Uh, and have it stay there is the nature of the wet palette to suck water down into itself and to put water up into the paint, which means that it is constantly changing your paint consistency. So essentially I have to mix every brush full of paint separately in order to get it to the consistency I want. I have to do that every time I load my brush and I load my brush a lot. So for me, the wet palette is not really doable unless I'm doing like wet blending on bigger areas. Um, then I did that a little bit differently. Um, in that case, let me see. Yeah, I think it needs to be a little more solid down here. Pardon me while I uh, cut off my diatribe to make sure that my ferret eyeballs are correct. Yes. Okay. And I'll just block in those eyeballs with really dark color. Uh, but yeah, so I like to be able to set up my paint consistency and just paint. Um, and using a well palette works with that as long as you use big, a lot of drops and a lot of water, uh, which I do. I also use thinned paint more, and that's another thing the well palette excels at. Uh, again, if you're using washes, glazes, or just general thinned paint for layering, um, the wet palette is not going to work in your favor, uh, at least not if you want to get a consistent result every time. So I usually recommend that people try both because if you're working with thicker paint, bigger brushes, and you're not working with a lot of thinner paint applications and you do a lot of wet blending, like I'm doing on this guy where I'm smooshing two colors together um, to get an effect, then uh, you could very much like the, the wet palette better um, because it will work with that. But if you wanna thin your paint and have a very consistent paint consistency where it doesn't alter over time very quickly, um, or you're using a lot of glazes, a lot of washes, a lot of thin paint applications, then I say go for the well palette, give it a try. Just trying to get this down. I have to actually make this go a little bit closer to here. I always use photo references for animals, even if I'm going to be making a mytho mythological or fantasy construct of a said animal, um, because I believe that it just gives you a lot more um, accuracy. It looks like a real animal then, um, even if you're doing a fantasy version of it. I believe very strongly because none of us, like, if I would have tried to paint this from memory, I would have screwed it up. But as it is, I'm going to be pretty happy with the weasel mask marking. And I'm just blocking it in. Blocking in his dark ears too, which are also in the photo. There's, little, there's his little face. Oh, can I get him? Can I get him zoomed? There we go. There's, ah! Ferret face, ah! So even though I've, I've actually got more white here near his eyebrows than uh, 
Looks like he might have just little little eyebrow marks, actually, now that I look at it. Now that I'm zoomed in, he's got little, little accents over the inner corner of his eye, which is actually a pattern also seen in wolves and uh, some dogs and other things. So that's what I mean when, I mean, a lot of mammals have a lot of genetics in common, so we shouldn't be surprised to see similar markings necessarily in different uh, groups of animals, between different groups of animals. So I'm going to make that a bit bigger. I'm going to come in and tweak this and make the red come out a bit here. So that kind of hooks up there. Make the markings a little bit smaller and closer to his eye. Um, you would refer to different parts on different areas of the body. You'd use uh, an owl reference when you were doing the head. Um, and the wings, and you would use a bear reference when you were doing the lower body and the claws. Let's see here. He's a very cute ferret. I like this ferret a lot. I think I'm going to put a little bit of off-white down the middle of his nose. Then I'm going to wet blend to bring it back up. What would you use to paint an outdoor resin decoration? Uh, outdoor resin is typically really slick and shiny. Um, gosh, I don't even know. Uh, there are craft paints that are like supposedly okay for outdoors, um, but nothing in our acrylic line is suitable for it. I would have to research. I mean, really, um, you almost want a stain or something. Uh, more than like, you know, like they do stained concrete, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know of anything in the hobby market that would actually be okay for outdoors. I'm going to do his little nose. Where's his little nose? There. Um, Evil Elvis, I think that the whiskers on him, if, if he had a normal muzzle, like if he wasn't snarling so so uh, ferociously, I might be able to suggest some whiskers than I would because this area would be smooth like it is here. Um, I would never model whiskers. They will never look realistic uh, unless you're using actual hair. At that point, you are merely a masochist. Um, but I think it's, uh, in, in most cases, it's enough to kind of put the dots and the, suggest a couple of whiskers. But because he's snarling, I'm not going to do it at all. It doesn't suit the model. Most of the time when you try to do whiskers on a 3D model, unless it is quite large and you are using actual threads or really fine, a really fine medium to do them, it will not look correct because it won't be in scale. So in, in my mind, that says it is not worth doing. Let's see here. Cute little nose. Such a cute little nose for such a ferocious beast. If you want to do it, sure, Valandar. Um, I like I said, I find it is almost always out of scale. I would not, not I I personally don't recommend it, but you know, if you get great results with it, then you can blow my mind at ReaperCon. We all have uh and even then black fishing line is so thick that I'd probably only use it on a bigger model. A lot of times stuff like that might work on a larger like a bust or something. And there are animal head busts out there. I wish there were more of them actually. I think they're fun. All right, so dark shadow above the nose with some little bit of uh, black and brown. And once again, I am going in the direction the fur would go. All right, and I'm gonna block in. It doesn't show, he's got little, it looks like he's got pink skin. So he probably has pink lips, but I have to make this mouth stand out. So I'm gonna use black and brown for it. because I want the teeth to stand out also. Like on his face, although I don't know if I can get close enough, 
but he's got a he's got a pinpoint highlight down here and down here, right below his nose, above um, below this shiny highlight on the top of his nose. That's how you make those show up. Is you're going for shiny at that point? It's almost an NMM effect. It's similar where you're suggesting the shine on a nose by putting just a little bit of a white highlight um, down here. His nostrils aren't very clearly sculpted down here, so I don't know if I would go for that because um, it's it's really kind of just uh, is he isn't because of the scale. He's, his nares just aren't sculpted very well, so I don't know that I would do it. Um, let me block in more of his bottom of his face and see if I can do it though just to show you what I mean. But yeah, at that point, when you are trying to bring out the nostrils, um, you are actually doing um, an effect where you're trying to suggest a certain finish wet with paint. So you are essentially painting highlights on something as if it were wet. You put a gloss on it. That only works really though if you, um... there we go. One. It only works if your nose is sculpted well. Sorry, I was about to say. So a little bit of a highlight at the top, which I'm gonna thin down. And then I wanna make sure that I kinda make uh, those nostrils look like nostrils. So I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna try to put kind of the suggestion of a rounded surface down here. There we go. And I'm gonna take this highlight a little narrower on the top of the nose. But that's the way to do it if you're gonna do it. I could make it look a little bit better if I would've gone. Uh, usually with noses, I actually go with blue liner because it's more of a blue black. It uh, lets me um, kind of intimate the shininess a little bit easier. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Just gonna minimize this highlight up here. I don't want it to show up like a white spot. I want it to more be a little spot highlight. Okay. Um, I would go brighter than charcoal Valandar with smaller models. It really is a pinpoint highlight. If you can even see it on this guy's nose, there's a tiny pinpoint highlight down there. Um, it depends on the size of the model though. And on really little models, like the dogs from, uh, Dungeons and Doggies, I probably wouldn't even go there. Uh, let me see here. But the problem is area around his eyes are so dark and you just don't get it. So let's see if I can highlight a little bit around his eyes. To kind of suggest where they are anyway. which isn't structure realistic, but I would like the eyes to actually stand out. And I can probably even fade that in if I touch it up a little bit. Getting our little dude. But yeah, the other way to do it actually, and uh, Valandar's not far off, would be to paint the entire nose like a charcoal. Um, so a slightly lighter than black. And then to shade your nostrils with pure black and uh, then highlight a little bit with a slightly lighter gray. That's another way you can do it. Shading down the store during this virus. Uh, I mean, we'll post on our social media if it's going to happen, Malin. Um I've heard nothing of it. We are we have shut down. I expect those rumors were started because we shut down paint club and magic tournaments. Um, this last weekend was the last paint club for a little while until this stuff uh, gets under control. Um, we have no reason at this time. I mean, considering they're mostly saying, um, you know, gatherings of 50 or more and our store seldom has more than 12 people in it. Um, I think that to shut down the store would be an excess of caution, but I mean, if you, if it's going to happen, you'll see it on social media. We will post about it and we will do it. If it seems that, um, it would be a good move to protect the community. So that will be what the way that we weigh it.
but I've heard nothing about it. But then I also haven't been at work since Saturday. But yeah. I mean, at, we only just decided... We only just decided to cancel Magic Tournaments and Paint Club last week. So obviously this thing is moving pretty fast and the appropriate response is going to be kind of decided by, you know, the country and the world and people in general. Um, if the store starts tanking, like if we seriously get no customer interaction, like people just stop coming, then I would expect that it's an easier decision to close the store down just because at that point, you know, we're paying employees to man the store and there's nobody in it. Um, but I mean, the bosses may decide that it's worth it anyway, just to keep a, some sort of presence. Um, it really depends. Like some people think that the response is blown out of proportion right now. And some people think that we need to be doing more. So it's a lot of conflicting information as far as, and belief cycles, as far as what people believe would be the best response. So we're just kind of going to try to keep it as good for you guys as we can. Yeah, see, Scientologist, you're up in the what's the one of the most populated areas with the virus, and and they're still not closing stores. So I would be very surprised if Reaper closed. The exception would be like if we discovered that like somebody in the store or an employee had come down had actually tested positive for coronavirus. Um, oh, I shouldn't say that for a thing. And uh, that at that point, then we might it might be worth it because we would know that you know somebody close was affected then we might have to do it. But it's, again, this is all like if, if thens, right? And right now there are no plans to shut down the store that I know of. The only other thing that could come into play would be the social distancing thing where, you know, maybe people feel that the store just gives people too close a proximity. But again, this is all not official Reaper word. Official Reaper will speak when official Reaper speaks. All right, I'm going to put some red color on his knee. I'm just, right now, I'm just blending and trying to get my fur to look a little bit more in line with Mr. Ferret. Mr. Ferret's got his uh, his reddish and golden. Oop, I'm painting my phone. That's a bad idea. Um, so he's got some golden color there. I've chosen to accentuate a little bit more on my ferret. And then uh, I need to get in with this white. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are depending on takeout, right? And we want, we don't want our restaurants to like shut down because they're sad and have no customers. Um, yeah. And it's, and so they're trying to adjust. Yep. Actually, uh, plasma, um, last Friday, we only had top, the top three one. It wasn't uh, the top 10 if it was this, this last Friday. So what, three days ago. I'm going to start highlighting. I'm using pure white. I did have it mixed with a little bit of one of my previous colors, but I could also just use pure, pure white and uh, thin it down. This is where paint consistency comes into play. And again, you're going to use that for highlights. It's especially important to brush in the direction the fur is growing. Because a lot of times the highlights are where, where the fur is picking up light and that's where texture is going to show up. So you want to give him a there, and I want to give him a nice pale sides over here. And you don't, if this fur is actually sculpted, which it's sculpted just a little bit on this model, feel free to ignore it. Um, or you can try to hit the strands if you want to, but it's not necessary. As long as you're in the same direction as the fur, and sometimes like my brush is picking up some of the strands of fur that are actually sculpted, um, like up here at the top. But uh, it's not necessary. And that's a little bit. You can see when I have too much paint on my brush or it's a little bit thick paint, I get a much bolder stroke. If I don't want that, then I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint so that I can get a thinner stroke. If you find that your brush strokes are too thick for what you're trying to paint, add water. He better not be playing Path of Exile. I'm sorry? Apparently somebody asked if you were playing Path of Exile while running the stream. Uh, no. No, I'm not. I'm actually trying to iron out the stuff from Friday. I'm trying to get the uh, the stuff redone and re-uploaded because it did not actually post like it was supposed to. Oh, no. 
knows? So, so you also can see like doing the highlights starts to really make the fur look a lot more like fur. And you can extend your white into these other areas here to get that kind of blended ef effect like Mr. Ferret where you can see like his white kind of goes into his reddish colors. It's a little bit here. It goes down his legs a little bit. So you can use your brush to make those highlights. And up here, I'm probably gonna do a mixture of that and that. And do the neck, because we've got a lot of red up there and not much gold. So I'm gonna start using little brush strokes. The fur is typically longer on the neck and shorter on the face. Oh no, Max, I'm, my uh, POE doesn't ever like close. So like it's it's open on my computer, but it's minimized on the login screen because POE just never actually disconnects you for some reason. It'll it'll stay running on your computer forever until you close. Till the end of time. So it's like I'm I'm sitting at the login screen. That's what you're saying. Which reminds me, I'm gonna go ahead and just close it. Yeah, I just close the dang thing out. So it's not eating up resources because yeah. I don't I have valuable resources right now. This is true. Wouldn't want to lose any ferret fur painting. Ferret fur is valuable. Okay, let's see here. And sometimes you get little like kind of shelves of fur that are actually sculpted and you can choose whether you want to emphasize those. I'm gonna come back here again with this slightly lighter color and make the fur go into these dark areas more. This is gonna um, take my red quota down a bit as I block it out with um, little hair strokes, but it'll still kind of be there, so I just don't wanna lose too much of it. Just little brush strokes to make a brushed fur uh, effect. And that's what really starts to make it look natural and, and uh, real. <laughs> I like the blue. I mean, this is actually for veterinarians, Nomad Zeke. Um, like, I have a lot of veterinary pill bottles, so it is a cute ferret. Yes, Bearded Goblin. This is a Reaper model. This is, um, if you type exclamation point RTB, it'll actually show you the uh, the link to, to go look. Yeah, he's a he's a giant ferret. I've had him on my bench for a while. Ron wanted me to paint him, but then when I got uh, busy with a bunch of other stuff, so I couldn't paint him. I'm gonna block in his little teeths. He has a snarl. Oh, and actually, yeah, Tazalan. So get this: you can actually log into the game and sit in town. Uh, and you know, in World of Warcraft, you can sit AFK in a town until you go AFK, and then it kicks you out of the server. You can sit permanently in that town for like weeks, months at a time. Collins has actually done it. In case you guys are curious. <laughs> Collins has proved this. Uh, he he will often just go to bed and leave his character. Like, he just won't even bother closing anything. So it looks like, you know, you could get on at whatever time. It's like, oh, he's playing back. The fact you, mess him, you send him a message, and he just doesn't respond because he's been sitting in that game forever. Hey, um, RTB, exclamation point RTB is not working here, Justin. Yeah, it is. It's just on a cooldown there. Oh, okay. So, like, it's. See how it's it, it. You can only type it once per like oh, I think there we twenty go. seconds or. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah, don't spam it. There we go. I think I need more golden colors on his neck. I have too much red, so I'll kind of eyeball that as I go and kind of figure out if I need more gold. And I can always uh, glaze with that color if I need to. But yes, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. There we go. Now we have more of a color balance. Yeah, that's nice, Daffodur. Yeah, it's nice that people, a lot of pharmacies, a lot of people to return prescription that they don't use to, I think, especially with the opioid stuff. There's no safe way to dispose of it. So actually, um, Let's see here. Uh, so actually, we went to Sam's Club this weekend, Miss Anne. Yeah. And uh, there was plenty of stuff there. Like so toilet paper? I get, yeah. No, there, I'm sorry. There wasn't toilet paper. And the, <laughs> meat was, the meat was kind of cleaned out. But like other than that, there was, and it wasn't even that busy either. It didn't look that yeah. crazy. Um, yeah. It was pretty reasonable. We, Maybe we even got 
Okay. We even got some uh, some allergy medication, you know, because I've been told that regular Walmarts and Targets are selling out of like medicine and stuff. People are cleaning out the medicine too. Oh, jeez. So like they're they're desperately trying to get food, and when that doesn't work, they're just gonna buy. Next, we're gonna have a run on collared T-shirts. You watch. Just <laughs> somebody says collared T-shirts are a good substitute for something else they need. Yeah, I don't know, and and the internet just contributes to it, really. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I went to Sprouts, um, because I couldn't get, uh, some things at, uh, Kroger, um, and Sprouts actually said they were, uh, the sales guy told me that they had started, the parent company said we were going to limit, you know, the number of X that people can buy, you know, like bottled water and toilet paper and stuff like that. So as stores put those limits in that essentially stop the unfair stocking up. Um, and I read this morning that toilet paper companies are purposefully not producing excess, like they're not ramping up production. Because they're all like, it's not like they're using this stuff right away. They're just putting it in their closet. So what happens during the summer when suddenly everybody has all the toilet paper they need for months and months and months? Yeah. You know, so the toilet paper companies are like, uh, no, no, we're not going to ramp up production beyond X point. And not only that, but like, I, I think it's cool too that if you, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of Walmarts and Sam Clubs and stuff around here are changing their hours to not be 24 hours. They're doing oh, yeah. 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So that they can allow all of their associates to come in, restock everything, and then they're going to start limiting everyone. So they will not allow people to reactively panic buy. So right. in theory, within a week, we'll see shelves return to normal. You'll just have a limit on what you can buy. Yeah, which is fine because I don't believe in really stocking up anyway. I, I I like the idea of being safe, but like over the course of time when it's not a like. If, if something happens and then everyone's doing it, then it's a bad idea. But if you right. were doing it over the course of the last five years when there wasn't a threat of any kind, then that's completely reasonable. I'm not a right. prepper by any means, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and that's the funny thing is that uh, it's not even in uh, this virus doesn't even cause intestinal issues. So all of the buying up of toilet paper is like double silly. So it's not like you even expect to get sick and use a lot of toilet paper. It's more like Kleenex. No, not at all. Correct. Which also was, is, yeah, go ahead. I was curious, um, and I keep seeing this, maybe you have too, Nisan. Um, I keep seeing these posts joking, I assume they're joking, posts on Facebook and on Instagram about how people are taking a roll of, of tape, paper towels and cutting it into three rolls. Um, you know, it says desperate times call for desperate measures, but oh, please, Lord. dear God, people do not put toilet paper in your septic system. Or uh, paper, in, towel. paper towels. I mean, not toilet paper. Do yeah. not put paper towels in your septic system, especially if you're connected to like the city water, you know. Yeah, it's a like bad city idea. Search. It's, it is going to cause such severe problems I down was the thinking, road. I was thinking about that too when I read about people using paper towels. I'm like, bad idea, terrible idea. Kleenex yeah. is fine, but not paper towels, people. Oh, yeah, Lord. please do not. Even even That's Kleenexes like don't break down very well, so just don't. Just make sure that it, it degrades. If it doesn't, if it doesn't break down in water, then you can't really do it. It's bad. Yep, yep. Listen to Justin, for he is wise. Also, uh, Ghost. I've actually seen an increase in in bidet ads on like Facebook and stuff. So I wouldn't be shocked if, uh, well, and other things too, not just Facebook, but like I wouldn't be shocked if bidet companies are cleaning the house, right? I'm going to put some highlights down here. There we go. Got some more highlights. Just using a little bits of uh, highlights to bring out some of this fur. And then I'm going to get some actual pure black and get his little feeties. Let's see here. <laughs> Wait, is your son a uh, Cowboys fan, Max? Because, I mean, I'd like to believe someone in that family is. little dark feet going on oh wow it's like late we've gone late justin oh it is you're right yeah we've had so much fun discussing all of this great stuff you shouldn't put down your your septic system but uh we have exceeded the time for painting a ferret 
And I only got half of the ferret done. That's kind of silly. I might have to do more ferret tomorrow. Isn't isn't the uh, the stuff that goes in the RV and like marine? Isn't that different though? Shadow like that that has to be a different kind of toilet paper. Yeah, the RV I guess stuff. It's not supposed to. Yeah, it's not supposed to dissolve in regular sewage systems. It's just supposed to like break down to a degree, I believe, based on what my father was telling me. Yeah, you do use different toilet paper in RVs. I've rented one before, and you have to buy septic safe. TP. Because I saw that, actually, and uh, this is a life hack here, guys, that uh, unless it's already out, the RV and marine toilet paper is available for purchase still on Amazon. So I imagine at this point that's probably gone as well, but I noticed that there was still plenty of that when I looked last. All right, guys, I think we're going to call. I'm going to put a, a little bit of a dark stripe down his top. But I think that we've uh, we've done pretty well today on our little ferret guy. Trying to make sure that he's got a nice dark stripe down his back. Yeah, Zambi, I had that conversation with my fiance. I think like last night or the night before. I was like, we should actually legitimately look into a bidet, and she was like, yeah, but <laughs> she. She wasn't convinced that it was going to be as thorough as she wanted it to be. Oh, wrong, wrong. I had to use one for a while when I was doing my surgeries because, um, you know, I, you can't you can't put pressure down there after you've had surgery down there. And uh, I used a bidet, and it was fine. Um, so what – I guess the, the question here is, is, is what if – so okay J indy here's, so, you. here's so, justin trying so i'm to be trying delicate. to trying to phrase this yeah i'm trying to be delicate so when you when you use one uh -huh. don't you still need to dry yourself off um yeah you would but i mean it's not uh you don't have to worry as much about like cleanliness as like using a lot of toilet paper though right you only need to pat yourself dry so oh i i, I wipe until i you know i i see basically you know traces of blood right I mean, that's, that's how you know it's <laughs> I found that I used less TP when I had the bidet. Ah. Uh, speaking of uh, yeah, speaking ahead. of blood, by the way, uh, Colin sent me a picture when he got back from Gamma. He washed his hands so many times when he was in Gamma, he has sores up and down his arms oh, and no. his hands because of how much he washed his hands. Yeah, I bet hand lotion is running out too. I haven't checked. Let's see. I want one more picture of my ferret. Who cares if we go late today, right? Thanks, Fyrosian. Everybody's so bored today because they're stuck at home. I'm just going to continue painting the ferret tail because I want the tip on the tail. Although this guy doesn't have his bushy. Eva. It's hard to do a bushy tail um, when you are uh, sculpting in putty. So this, I think, is a traditionally sculpted figure. It's just for you, Kuroneko. There we go. Nice dark tail tip. I think it might have a stripe down the back too. So there. All righty. All right. I think uh, I think that's pretty good. I think we can stop there. I'm just kind of blocking in where I want the tail to be, and that way we've got a, a more or less realistic color pattern on our ferret. Like we're working on it, but you know, I actually am pretty happy with how the fur looks here. I like it. And I like, I really love painting animals, so it's, for me, it's a kind of a point of pride to make them look good, so. Thanks, Max. Now, are most of these bidets that you can get, are they, can you fashion them to the toilet you currently have, or do I have to have a special toilet for this? Oh, I actually didn't even use one that was uh, hooked up to the toilet. I just, they've got a hand one called Blue Bidet, where you just, like, point and aim, um, and I actually found that that was sufficient. Point and aim. That's yeah. that's great. Well, you I know, always wanted a video game while I was uh, <laughs> well. Know, doing business. People are on their phones all the time anyway. Just you know, consider it another form of engagement. Um, but I mean, that way I could you know point it away from my incisions, or I could you know be more you know it wasn't automated, so I could control it. Is my point. So, all these things you wish you didn't know about, but you learn about because you had surgery. Lots of surgery in my case. Do, do, do. And I'm still sitting here painting, even though I'm like, we should stop, but I'm still painting. 
because weasel tail. Weasel tail's not adequate yet. It's getting there though. It's all right, it's all right. I, I really actually will stop at this point. You guys see all this nice little fur texture? Yes, yes, Borderlands 3 is a great game to Mazzy. I bidet for iPhone, Rissia, that's awesome. Uh... All right, well, I'm ready when you are, Miss Anne. All righty, guys. So there you are. So you see see the pretty fur? See the pretty fur? The pretty fur is pretty. It's a fur it. Oh, yes. That looks really good, Anne. Looks really good. Yeah, I like it. And it's it's there isn't much fur texture on this guy, which means I can actually paint in a lot of the fur texture. So I think he's coming along really well. Uh, maybe we'll do his, his other side tomorrow. I've just got that one arm like kind of out. And I need to definitely make his face more realistic because I've just got it blocked in right now with the pattern. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll play around. Good deal. Just All looking right, guys. at this stuff and yeah, thanks guys. And uh, definitely I'll, uh, I'll do two streams tomorrow then and we'll do the AMA Thursday uh, and we'll do two streams on Wednesday as is customary. Um, so yeah. Excellent. You guys have a here. Let me come back and actually like say hello to you. All right. All right. So there we go. Uh, do you have a raid lined up, Justin? Yes, I do. Okie dokie. Then I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Hang out for the raid. Who are we raiding? We're, We're raiding just Isis. All right. Good. Excellent. All right. Have fun. Keep, keep yourselves mentally engaged while you're stuck at home. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. See you later, guys. Spread the Reaper love. Keep being awesome, guys. Thank you. Say hi to Dices for us.